Hello and welcome to Comic Book Herald's Road to Legion of Superheroes Millennium. This is a new DC Comics event that is coming out in October 2019, and I am going to walk you through the comics recommended reading that will get you ready for Millennium. This is the return of the Legion of Superheroes into the DC Universe proper, and really the first time we've seen them kind of in earnest come into the DC Rebirth of Era, that uh, era of comics that kicked off in 2016. I'm your host, Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of comicbookherald.com. That is the reading order I've got up here on the YouTube video. You can see, of course, if you're watching, and you can go access that right now. I'll include a link in the show notes. You can go to Legion of Superheroes Millennium Reading Order right now to see all of the Road 2 comics that I'm recommending, as well as the reading order that will be updated, of course, as these comic books are released. So Millennium is going to be a little bit different than your standard comic book event in that it's really just two big issues. Um, there doesn't appear to be a ton of crossover necessarily, maybe a little bit of play with Superman written by the writer who's also going to be doing uh, Millennium, Brian Michael Bendis, but we'll get into that. But for the most part, you know, unlike something like uh, over on the Marvel side, War of the Realms or Absolute Carnage, there's a gazillion tie-ins and you're trying to figure out where do they fit chronologically, Legion of Superheroes Millennium doesn't appear to be playing like that or actually the better dc example would be like you're the villain right now where it's crossing through you know the entire line millennium is going to be pretty self-contained at least the way it's being pitched currently which is good it's going to be a little bit easier so the simplest version of a legion of superheroes millennium reading order is you're going to read probably leading into this superman by written by brian michael bendis is going to be your clearest road to path in and then especially issues 14 through 16 which dc has listed in their own road to legion as a sort of prelude, and then you're gonna to wanna to go, of course, into these two big issues. But the reason I'm talking through a reading order and sort of a, a road to guide is because there's all sorts of timelines, DC Universe timelines and characters that are being mentioned that are going to be focuses of this story. And I wanna give you a little context for these characters and maybe some recommended reading so that you can understand the, um, you know, how Millennium is going to play out, these different timelines that are going to be intersecting. What we've been told so far about Millennium pre-release is that the story is going to span a thousand years of DC history, and we're going to see timelines, things like Batman Beyond, which started as an animated series a lot of people are familiar with, or things like Commandi or, or OMAC, Jack Kirby creations from the 70s. We're going to see these future timelines sort of intersect and be brought together and connect ultimately with the 31st century heroes, the Legion of Superheroes. So let's start talking a little bit more detail about the Legion themselves. I think, you know, like I was saying, if you're not familiar with the Legion to date, I, I couldn't blame you because, again, they really have been relatively absent from DC Comics for, I would argue, too long. Um, you know, these are future heroes. They are created in DC's Silver Age. They are, in many ways, you know, kind of the, they really start off like Superboy's time travel. Superboy teams up with them, as does Supergirl in the, the you know, Silver Age comics. And they are, you know, a huge, wide collection of a vast number of heroes. You have things like uh, characters like Chameleon Boy, uh, Lightning Lad, Saturn Girl. There are, there are almost too many to count on this giant, expansive roster of extremely, extremely imaginative characters. So they're a very fun team that I think, you know, too few people have probably gotten the chance in recent years to enjoy. So I do think there's a lot to be said for catching up on Legion Comics. You can, of course, do that with the Comic Book Herald reading order here, or I've got, you know, some specific references as well. I do want to pause here on this image of John Kent and reaching out for a Legion flight ring, which is basically when you get Legion of Superheroes membership, you get your own flight ring. This image of, of John Ken is important because if you don't know who John Ken is, this is where I think the Road 2 is really going to play a role. Uh, that comes from the Brian Michael Bendis, or the most recent developments, I should say, come from the Bi Brian Michael Bendis written Superman run. Now, John Kent, actually a character that has been around DC Rebirth Superman comics, really since Jump in Rebirth actually predates Rebirth and some of the Road to Rebirth books. But he's the son of Clark Kent and Lois Lane. And the, one of the teases here for Millennium is John Kent is going to join up with the Legion of Superheroes. So that's probably the most direct relationship we're going to get between uh, the Bendis-written Superman run and, and the actual Legion of Superheroes Millennium ongoing. Otherwise, we're going to be talking today about characters 
that are going to be referenced in these two issues of Millennium. And I will give sort of a, a high level overview of all of them so you can get a feel. Again, if you go to the actual reading order itself, you can see uh, the, the recommended reads that I'll give you. The first one is fairly easy. It's Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond is a character that we know as Terry McGinnis. Uh, it is a future Batman. He is trained by Bruce Wayne, who's sort of older and can't quite do it anymore. And uh, many of you will recognize this character from the popular early 2000s animated series, which is actually where Terry McGinnis and Batman Beyond began. It has since, because of its popularity, progressed to the comic book stage, and that is where you can find Batman Beyond currently. I think one note here is Ryan Sook is the artist who is doing all the character designs and is going to be doing the ongoing uh, Legion of Superheroes comic that's going to come out of Millennium. So you're going to have Millennium 1 and 2 are going to come out in October 2019. And then starting in November 2019, there's going to be um, there's going to be an ongoing Legion of Superheroes number one written by Brian Michael Bendis, the architect behind all this, with art by Ryan Sook, who actually has done here, as you can see, some art in Batman Beyond, which I would highly recommend checking out. So certainly not an unfamiliar character. I love Batman Beyond. I think it's a really fun concept. Now, again, this is like nearer state future than um, than the Legion typically is. You know, it doesn't reach out to the 31st century. So it will be interesting, I think, to see how this is actually going to connect to um, to Legion timeline. And hang on a second here because I totally just did something weird with my photo. Let's see if I can move it. Nope. Okay. I'm going to keep on plugging right along. The next character on the list is Kamandi, Last Boy on Earth. This is a Jack Kirby created character in the 1970s. And basically what I would recommend you you understand here is Kamandi is, as the title says, the last boy on Earth in sort of a Planet of the Apes style story. And basically you have, you know, hyper intelligent animals of all sorts. You have different tribes and different, uh, you know, beasts and beings that are ruling the Earth. And Kamandi's trying to navigate his way through this timeline. Again, it's a future state that I think at the time was sort of Kirby's vision of what is the DC universe sort of post-apocalypse going to look like and now has become, I think, one of several possible post-apocalyptic futures. Uh, it is definitely not the only one. And obviously, like we're going to see in Millennium, how it's actually going to, uh, you know, how it, they're going to explain it being relevant as, you know, is it the apocalypse? Is it one apocalypse? How is this going to play out? I would also recommend it for recommended reading here. Of course, you have the Kirby books, but there's also the Commandi Challenge, which is something that DC did as part of Rebirth. Um, I think a, a couple years ago, probably in 2017, this is a, a bunch of different like DC talent and writers and creators. They took they did one issue at a time, and basically what they would do is they would give the next writer a seemingly impossible situation for Commandi to get out of, and then that writer would have to figure out how to do it. And there's one issue in particular in this. I think off the top of my head, I would guess it's Commandi Challenge number nine, but I could be off there on the numbering. Uh, it's written by Tom King with art by Kevin Eastman of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fame, and it's a really great solo issue. It, it's one of my favorite King written issues that's sort of just off the beaten path. I would recommend if you're a fan of Commandi or, or interested in exploring more that you definitely do check out that read because it's a pretty good time okay the next character that has been promised and again all these characters promise to be in the pages of millennium we're going to see them we're going to see their timelines and some sort of connection to the legion the next one is omac the one-man army corps this is another jack kirby creation from the 1970s i think recommended reads here are pretty easy you can either do the kirby written omac which i think is the, is the most logical starting point the 70s written kirby dc comics to get basically what is omac's deal i think it's in the name one man army corps it's also in the mohawk awesome right very cool character i think the most modern representation of omac that i would recommend checking out is like the greg rucka written um mid-2000s tie-ins to infinite crisis when he brings the omac project forward in a very new light and a different approach to, you know, it's no longer the one-man Army Corps. It becomes something else entirely. So that's like a different sort of project because, again, it really ties into mid-2000s OMAC, um, but it's a pretty good time. Other time-traveling characters, and again, like 
if you're a time traveler, if they're from a future timeline, there's a pretty decent chance they're going to be here in Millennium. I think, you know, one thing I sort of passed over, I showed an image of, but I, I didn't say anything about, is there's going to be a POV character that Bendis is writing throughout Millennium who's sort of traveling and meeting with all these different characters and timelines. And she, we don't know officially who she is. You know, we can theorize and guess, I think, at this point. Um, but she's going to be visiting with all these characters throughout Millennium and kind of be our entry point, you know, our kind of kitty pride into the uncanny X-Men, if you will. Uh, the next character that's going to offer some road to explanation is Booster Gold. Booster Gold, of course, has a long and and fun history with the Justice League. Uh, he's best pals with Blue Beetle. He's a time traveler from the future. He's actually from the Legion of Superheroes timeline in that uh, he was, you know, he was not part of the Legion of Superheroes. He was um, one of, you know, the, he was a custodian basically in their timeline, and he stole some tech from the Legion that uh, that he then used in our present day timeline to to you know present himself as a superhero and get rich and famous and has mild success in doing so. I think there are a lot of interesting reads for Booster of late. Things have not been very good for Booster, to say the least. Uh, he kind of kind of lost his mind in the pages of Batman, and that's only the beginning, really, of his downfall. So I would probably point readers interested in checking out Booster to Justice League International, which is the 1980s Justice League series written by J.M. DeMattis with plots and art by Keith Giffen, or co-collaborative plots by Keith Giffen. It's a very funny book. That's where you get the true Booster and Blue Beetle friendship. Uh, that is well worth your time. Those comics are very fun and entertaining as well, and, and some of my favorite Booster Gold moments, of course, too. You can also get his origin actually written by Jan, Dan Jurgens from around that time as well. Next up, this one was the hardest one to track down for me, definitely the character I knew the least about, sort of prepping for all these characters that are going to play a role in Legion of Superheroes Millennium. It's Tommy Tomorrow. This is a early, like almost late Golden Age into the Silver Age DC character. He's the man of the future, as you can see here, of the year of 1988, which is just wonderful, right? This character created in 1947. And basically the way he existed then and it's been interpreted now is he's sort of a space police officer. He's one of the planeteers, um, and they are basically protecting the future is the way that it is presented. We've seen him uh, in modern days, actually, and I have to thank a reader here on uh, on Comic Book Herald on the Legion Millennium Reading Order called out that he's been in the pages of Adventures of the Super Sons, the 12-issue maxi series written by Peter Tomasi. That is the, the follow-up to Super Sons. So let me back up here. Super Sons are Jonathan Kent, who I already mentioned as the, the Superman uh, son, who is going to be a big player in Legion. And he is teaming with Batman's son, Damian Wayne, in Super Sons. It's a really fun book, one of the best things, I think, to come out of the DC Rebirth era. And their continuing adventures in Adventures of the Super Sons, they actually did run into Tommy Tomorrow. It begins in Adventures of Super Sons number 6, really on through issue number 12. And in this version of Tommy Tomorrow, he's a pretty hardened uh, space police officer that we find. And he, he basically, um, when he meets... John Kent and and Damian Wayne, you know, he is like not even just threatening. He is taking them to prison that, you know, he is arresting them. He doesn't like Earth things we learn. I'm interested in seeing how much of this version of Tommy Tomorrow that uh, that Bendis will be pulling in. I'm guessing quite a bit, uh, but we do see that he has some familiarity with Jonathan Kent of of, you know, a handful of timelines i'll just say so adventures of the super sons is definitely the modern read because otherwise tommy tomorrow is you know few and far between in terms of appearances in the dc universe the next character is going to be a whole lot more familiar to a lot of you it's supergirl this is actually gonna be the first story i believe they've said uh it's gonna be drawn by jim lee which is super exciting you have bendis and lee doing a supergirl story and supergirl has a a nice interesting history with the legion of superheroes as well she not only teamed up with the team in the silver age after superboy sort of transitioned out of that stage but she also had a mid-2000s run that was a legion of superheroes story that transitioned into supergirl and the legion of superheroes 
as the series progressed. It was originally written by Mark Wade with art by Barry Kitson there in the mid-2000s. And I think that's actually where I would point a lot of you to start because it's the most contemporary and most recent timeline. But again, obviously, like I've got a full Supergirl reading over order over on Comic Book Herald if you're interested in checking out more. But for the purposes of Millennium, I would definitely recommend checking out her modern times really hanging out and leading, in a lot of ways, the Legion of Superheroes. The next Road to Guide that, again, is the most direct and probably the most relevant is going to be everything Jonathan Kent related, as we've seen him reaching out for his Legion flight ring. The son of Superman and Lois Lane is, in fact, going to be a player with the Legion. He has, um, and, and this is kind of has the potential to be a little spoilery here uh, from the Bendis Superman run. So if you haven't read any Bendis written Superman, which started in uh, 2018 with the Man of Steel six issue weekly, there are occurrences with John Kent that I'm about to talk about. So if you want to go and and hop over to the Road to Guide right now and read your Bendis Superman and come on back, I would recommend it. Otherwise, I'm going to continue in three, two. One, John Kent, in the pages of Bendis' Superman, has aged up. He goes on vacation with good old granddad into space, and in the process, like, a ton of time passes. And he goes from being this kind of 10-year-old boy that we see him as, he's 10-year-old, you know, teaming up with Damian Wayne in Adventures of the Super Sons, he becomes a teenager. And that is basically, it's going to get him into sort of the Superboy status that has him ready to be uh, a member of the Legion of Superheroes, I think is kind of the intent of what they're plotting. And obviously Superman and Lois have sort of been dealing with the return of John Kent as this older individual in these years that they may have missed in the pages of Superman as well. So if you're only going to read one thing, I think, as a build-up to Legion of Superheroes Millennium, I do think, again, because it's the same writer, it's the same mind and the same architect, the Brian Michael Bendis Superman is probably going to be the most closely connected. Uh, you do also have Bendis writing action comics in an event called, a build-up called Leviathan Rising, and now an ongoing event called Event Leviathan. As far as I can tell, it doesn't have a connection to Legion of Superheroes Millennium. Now, we might find out otherwise and might see sort of everything he's doing intersect, but I think kind of there's two tracks to the Bendis Superman universe right now. Superman is covering uh, John Kent and, like, big space cosmic ideas, and action has been dealing with Metropolis, the Daily Planet, and spy organizations of the DC Universe. So unless that changes, I would actually recommend you stick to just Superman um, to prevent or to you know, minimize the chances of any additional confusion. All right. So that's the road to guide for the most part through all of the characters that are going to set the stage for Legion of Superheroes Millennium. I have a couple theories here. Uh, one is the idea that DC 1 million might play a role in this. I think, again, Millennium has said, you know, it's going to tackle 1,000 years of DC history and get us to the 31st century, uh, which would not take us up to DC 1 million. Now, for those unfamiliar, DC 1 million is a timeline created by the writer Grant Morrison in the late 90s. It was part, it kind of a spinoff of his JLA run he was doing at the time. And it, it looked at literally if you mapped out, like, when would Action Comics number one th- 1 million come out you know what would that timeline look like so it's this crazy sort of future of the dc universe i just think if you're gonna play with all the future characters and future timelines of the dc universe this is one i'd like to see integrated as well i'd be a little surprised it might be too much to handle in the pages of two issues but i do think it would be a lot of fun i've also got a list here on the road to of some of my picks for good legion of superheroes starting points uh, i think for modern runs that kind of or more modern runs everybody should check out legion of superheroes the great darkness saga this is the paul levitt's keith giffen era i think if you want to get a feel for what these comics were like in the 80s this is probably the most fun to start with for modern readers because of how big uh you know the great darkness components that i won't even spoil here even though it's pretty obvious if you even look at a hardcover um how big they become in dc history you also have action comics 858 to 863 this is an arc written by jeff johns uh, in which we look at a, a world where a future where Superman's myth and legacy has been manipulated and he has to team up with the Legion of Superheroes to sort of reclaim it for the future. And then, of course, the final one I mentioned here, like I talked about a little bit in the Supergirl section, is Superhero or Supergirl and the Legion from the mid 2000s. So all of that takes us finally to these issues that are going to be coming out here in October. Again, we're going to have the Superman build up 
in page, you know, in comics 14 and 15, and then Millennium itself in one and two. And I'll be updating over on Comic Book Herald. We do have uh, the apparent like epilogue to this or a follow up is going to occur again in Superman issue 1621. This story, the trade, is called The President of Earth, and it's going to be a John Kent and Legion story. I don't know as of yet. You know, I'll figure out as the issues are coming out where it should fit in relation to uh, the, the Millennium and then the ongoing Legion of Superheroes. But for the time being, there's your road to Legion of Superheroes Millennium. I think it's going to be a really fun time. I know Legion fans are super excited to see the return of the team. I'm super excited to see Brian Michael Bendis take on this challenge. I think he's been doing actually a really great job with um, with the Superman books. And I think you know bringing Legion back as a part of that is going to be very exciting as well. So it's going to be a good time. I think DC's in an interesting place right now in an interesting time where they can bring back the Legion and have them be successful. So I'm hoping that's the case because, again, they really haven't gotten a very fair shake, especially in the 2010s. You know, they had a new 52 run, but then from there, it was really just about it. So, and I do have to mention here, at the very tail end of this, there's some sort of Doomsday Clock connection. I haven't figured this out either. I'm actually kind of like sitting back on Doomsday Clock until the thing actually finishes to really put my thoughts together. But I expect we're also going to see a Millennium and Doomsday Clock I don't know about a collaboration, but some sort of connected tissue that explains the timelines connecting, maybe, you know, like how all these futures could become part of one thing. I expect maybe there's going to be a little bit of that in Doomsday Clock if that book ever actually does finish, because obviously it's been quite delayed. So there you have it. That's the road to Legion of Superheroes Millennium. I'm your host, Dave Busing. You can check out all my works on comicbookherald.com. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere at Comic Book Herald. Again, on YouTube, the channel's Comic Book Herald. Uh, on podcasts, you can find me at Best Comics Ever or the Marvel exclusive podcast I do, My Marvel This Year. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Enjoy Legion of Superheroes Millennium. And as always, enjoy the comics. <laughs>